Um, I personally have walked across from Nigeria to Cameroon without any problem, no security, no. I didn't even realize I had entered Cameroon. So our mm. borders are very poor. So that's one thing we need to look at very strongly. The second thing is communities. We need to engage our communities because these diseases start in communities. It's an individual that becomes sick wherever they are, in their home, and then they now report hopefully to a hospital. So we need to engage communities and educate them on all the symptoms and signs to look out for, all the ways that they can ensure that their personal hygiene and personal health is good and that they're doing the right things to protect themselves and their families. And the third thing is we have to train our health workers because most doctors, nurses, and people like that are not trained on how to identify these things. It's not something they learn in school. Um, so what Dr. Adanova did was rare. Um, you know, the first few doctors that saw that particular patient diagnosed him with malaria, that was it. They didn't add, they didn't think there was anything else wrong with him. So ensuring that all health workers can correctly identify symptoms and diagnose patients that present with something infectious and then quickly isolate them from the rest of the hospital and everybody else so that action can be taken further. All right, uh, let's come to the aspect of the Ebola heat in Nigeria a few months ago, uh, the one in Imo, yes. The one in Abuja, so many. Even we have, you know, most times the people will say that uh, journalists always want to scare. No, we're not scaring people, but we also feed on information. A call to Minister of Health, a call to Commissioner of Health in that state. Uh, most times, just here, yeah, want to be strong. Uh, is a bullet cleared off in Nigeria as a whole right now, uh, Dr. Loretta? Um, I mean, we can never say 100%. Okay. Those sound like they are rumors because I don't think we've actually had a confirmed case of Ebola All right. um, in Nigeria since 2014. Mm. Um, but of course, we have, um, you know, um, this is like Lassa fever. We have, you know, diseases that we've not seen in a while mm. that are coming back. All know, right. Even yellow fever, you know, things like that. So we have to have a high suspicion of index, um, you know, they have an index of suspicion, I'm sorry, um, that not every fever is malaria. Um, you know, health workers need to be able to identify that um, the infectious disease is not, you know, if it's not malaria, what do you do? How do you take care of it? And how do you, you know, um, isolate someone if it's something that needs to be isolated? All right, okay. Uh, for those who are still tuning in, the still at matters on the number one at radio, and we have with uh Niola Soleye and uh Loretta Ovaje from uh Dr. Amelio Stella that they for our trust program. Uh, remember, you can tweet at us this morning. Have been a go ahead, how yes, because there are more things you need to know about Ebola. Remember, there are still a lot of story on our webpage this morning. Let's come to individual right now. Um uh, I learned about your is Start With Me program, uh, a hashtag, uh, people out there want to know more about the program. What is it all about? How can uh, people be involved in that? Yeah, so essentially the Start With Me program is what I was describing earlier. That's how we reach out to communities to get people to understand that even when Ebola hasn't been in Nigeria since 2014, but we have many other things. Um, as Dr. Loretta has said, many things that are continuing to make people sick and kill people. So how do you protect yourself? So that program is all about outreach, going into communities, educating um, adults and children. We also have a program through the Lagos State Ministry of Education for that, where we have set up health and hygiene clubs in schools around the state to ensure that children are owning this issue. They understand. We call them Adrasa Ambassadors. So these children go out and they help us spread these messages to their own family members, their neighbors, their community, um, and their siblings, everybody, all their friends. So it's important for everybody to understand how they can play a role. Um, and that's what we do through the Insights with Me program. So we, um, we encourage people to visit our website, follow us on social media. You can contact us to find out ways to get involved and ways we can support. Um, we accept volunteers. Obviously, we're an NGO, so we also accept donations. But people do all kinds of things creatively to support us. For example, we have um, a guy who's running a marathon in the UK. Okay. And he's getting sponsorship for running that marathon and raising money for us all the way there. So people have done all kinds of things to get involved with what we're doing. So we just invite you to follow us on social media at Drasa Trust and visit our website www.drasa. T R U S T dot All right, uh, mostly coming up, we look at the uh, law of good infection control, hand hygiene practices. Uh, we'll talk more on how Ebola is spread and more and more when we return from the short break. It's still head matters 
on your number one address. Stay tuned and don't go away. All right, welcome back to the Light Matters this morning, and we are looking at a very important issue still with uh, Dr. Uh, Loretta and also Niola Soleil with us this morning. Yes, uh, we have been talking about Ebola and Ebola, but I want to believe uh, apart from Ebola, we have another a lot of infections that are out there because uh, I remember it's not only Ebola, the DRA, I say trust is all about. Tell us more about a lot of uh, uh, this. Uh, we talk about uh, or we talk about apart from Ebola, what are the more are uh, infections that are out there that we should be aware of? So I think that um, we we have a lot of infectious diseases in this part of the world, especially in Nigeria, All right. that we take for granted. So, for example, cholera. You know, everybody probably knows what cholera is. Everybody has known someone who's been affected with cholera. Uh, but most of the time, we think about it as okay, we just have diarrhea and everything. But cholera is actually a disease that kills people. Um, if it's not treated very quickly, you know, it's something that can lead to dehydration and within hours someone dies from cholera. So um, there are diseases like typhoid, you know, infectious diseases are, you know, we have Lassa fever like we mentioned, we have, we've had monkeypox um, recently. So there are lots of um, ones that are endemic here and there are some that are you know, we've not had for a while and are coming back. And then, of course, there's the risk of new infections. Um, when Ebola came in 2014, we never had Ebola before. Um, so, you know, these are the things that we um, work with healthcare workers to be able to, um, you know, make sure that they have, you know, you mentioned IPC earlier, infection prevention and control. So just having and practicing um, good infection prevention and con um, control throughout you know, their work um, protects themselves, they protect themselves and they're protecting others at the same time. Um, you know, so there are lots of infectious diseases. I mean, we think of, we, we talk of malaria too. Malaria is an, in, an, an infectious disease. It's just not typically spread like airborne. It's not, you know, it's not the typical infectious disease, but it is an infectious disease and we think it's normal. But <laughs> we need to not think that these diseases are normal because when we Thing that they're normal, then people, especially the average person, you know, has a lackadaisical attitude towards, towards them. Yeah. All right, so let's come to uh, infectious control program right now. What are the ongoing program, especially for individuals? Uh, I know about the hand washing. Yeah, even but the, even the story of hand washing going on right now, people still don't even know how to wash their hand properly. <laughs> so apart mm -hmm. from hand washing, let's look at our uh, gym uh, practices. Time of doing Ebola, we, we, we saw the issues of sanitizer cost just went up. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So apart from that, uh, let me know more about hygiene practices when it comes to infections around the house for individual, for community and also the family. Um, so you've already mentioned the big one is hand hygiene. Okay. Um, hands are, we talk about hands a lot. Um, someone the other day was telling me that it, um, hand hygiene, we need to talk about other things because hand hygiene is cliche, but I was like, well, in, it's cliche, but 80% of infectious diseases are spread through the hands. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> the easiest, simplest, most, you know, the cheapest way of preventing an infection is washing your hands mm -hmm. with soap, not rinsing your hands, because a lot of people, <laughs> you know, they will rinse their hands with water and say they've washed your hands. No, you've not washed your hands, you've just rinsed your hands, that's all you've done. And the germs are still there. So you need to use soap and you need to scroll back and forth. You know, there, there are diagrams on how to, you know, the right way of washing your hands, but you literally need to cover every surface of your hand with soap and water and wash it off and, you know, rinse. And don't use your clothes to dry your hands. If you don't have a piece of, you know, um, like a clean napkin or paper towel or serviette or something, just air dry. Um, it's okay to look like a chicken. Like, <laughs> I'd rather, you know, um, be safe because, again, you are keeping yourself safe by keeping your hands clean and you're keeping people around you safe by keeping your hands clean. That's the, um, that's the big message there. Um, of course, like my colleague has mentioned, 
um, personal hygiene overall is also a big part of it. And environmental sanitation is another part of it. You know, a lot of um, our infectious diseases are also tied to the environment. So cholera is like tied to the environment. You know, um, so when you have poor water and you have poor sanitation, um, you know, that those are the things that help to cause and spread outbreaks very quickly. Um, so when one person, once one person has cholera, for example, it can spread very quickly. You see like a hundred people showing up at some health center that have the same illness. Um, and of course, you know that Lagos has a waste problem. And so, <laughs> um, yeah, we need to deal with it, especially because the rains are coming. And it's so, a pending issue right now. Right, so. right. And so because of the rains, um, you know, things like cholera are definitely like seen every year in Lagos. Um, we also talk about food safety um, as part of our um, health and hygiene. Um, it starts with new program uh, because things like Lassa are you know, tied to food also. You know, when um, the rats, uh, other rodents, um, they, they you know, urinate on food or just you know walk across it. They don't fall sick, but and you will not know who's you know which rat is carrying rat. Last half even you're not going to know which rat is the most or not meter rat anyways. You're going to be picking up rats to see how many of them have you know, breasts. So um, it's just literally like making sure your food is cooked properly, and when you eat you know food, fruits or anything that is not that doesn't it's not subject to cooking. And, you know, it's that's, that's really done the right mm -hmm. way. All right, uh, let's come to me, Yolanda. I, I saw your story about the uh, the storytelling, and uh, the NATO has to that uh, storytelling with uh, the control infections. Uh, what is the partnership? You mean storytelling as in a way of delivering? Mm -hmm. Yes, so I mean, storytelling is part of the work that we do because we were founded on the story, the story of a woman and what she did mm -hmm. and how she save many lives. So storytelling is core to what we do. In terms of teaching people both in communities and people who work in health facilities about controlling infections and what they can do, we tell stories as well. For example, um, last year we had, we're currently having the largest Lassa fever outbreak we've ever had in Nigeria. It's coming to an end, but this has been the largest one to date. And last year we had it as well. And last year, um, in one hospital in particular, there was one patient that infected five doctors. So that means that five doctors saw one patient. None of them knew that patient had Lassa. All of them got infected. One of the doctors went back to her office when she was just initially, initially becoming sick. Um, she sat down and a friend came to visit her in her office. That friend also later developed Lassa. So you can see the chain of infection and how these things spread. We have examples of people, a lot of things we tell health workers is like, if you don't practice good infection control in your facility where you work, so you contract an illness and you don't know, let's say you're carrying bacteria or virus on your clothing, for example, because you didn't wear your apron, you didn't wear your gloves, you didn't wear your face mask, you won't go home and the first thing, as soon as you open the door and walk inside, your children come and they give you a hug because they've missed you all day. As they hug you, that bacteria and virus that's on your clothing and on your face because you didn't wear face mask and apron has now transferred to your child. child. So those are the kind of stories that we tell because these are things that happen in real life and they don't think about it on a daily basis, but we're trying to get them to understand that this is this is a life or death thing. It's not to scare you, but it's to give you the information you need to protect yourself. All right, let's come to how Ebola is spread now. Uh, let's take it from there. Uh, how is Ebola spread and is there something people should look for before they contact the doctor or speak to maybe contact lines? Uh, what do you think people should know? So um, Ebola, first of all, is not a one. All right. <laughs> but it's spread with direct contact with, you know, an infected person or someone who's died, of course, from the infection. Um, so... Um, Another way is also by infected um, bushmeat, and then also by direct contact with an infected um, object. Mm. So, um, yeah. So direct contact with body fluids, direct contact with an infected object, and right. then direct contact with um, So uh, any symptoms, meat. anything people should look at? Um, that uh, we should be, we will always look at our symptoms or any. Um, so, well, at the end of the day, most of the symptoms of infectious diseases are similar. 
the startup is a fever. Yes. Okay. So that's why we always say that not every fever is malaria. You always you can't assume it's malaria. So please, if you have a fever, go and get, go to the hospital, go and get tested. Um, so yeah, they start off with a fever. Um, you might have you know weakness, mm. um, headaches, um, vomiting, um, diarrhea. So <laughs> it's not it's not really. Oh, this is all, these are the only symptoms that you know someone that has Ebola is going to have that is going to be different from another infectious disease. So once you have a fever, just don't assume it's malaria, especially at this time. Go to a healthcare center and get tested. All right. That's, so uh, is that a fast line or fast outline for people to? Uh, do we have any in Nigeria? I'm trying to because I used to put all these numbers on my head a few yes. months ago. Mm -hmm. uh, people could get an outline of uh, the organization so that in case we have anything we can alert them out. Well, since we're not health workers, we mm. um, we we would um, not necessarily ask people to contact us directly. Okay. But but um, the NCDC, first of all, well, you can con contact your state ministry of health all right. if, if you're not sure where to go. But mm. of course, go to a healthcare center. Um, state Ministry of Health is the next, and then the NCDC, um, there's a toll-free number. Yeah, I think we'll get um, that. Okay, do yes. you have that here? The NCDC, yeah, um, actually you have it on. Oh, all right, I think we'll get that, that across to people while yes. you're searching for that. Okay. Yes. Um. Yes, it's true. Okay, I could remember zero eight zero nine. Uh, I will look for that number, but I just remember one of the line. We'll get that toll line before we leave the studio today. Okay, um... I think your lights are actually helping us. Yeah, so the, the toll free line is 0800 970. Okay. 0000. That's four zeros and then one zero. Okay, uh, 0800 970. Uh, yes. 974010. Okay, right. we'll make that number available on our platform today. So, because if you have any suspected case, uh, you should contact your Ministry of Health and also the NCD outline. All right, let's come to this aspect of uh, thank God for Dr. Amir Stella. Now, so how can individual uh, emulate that courage? I think it, it all comes down to this, This it starts with me that we're talking about. That's mm. why we call the program It Starts With Me. I think Nigerians, we don't, we don't value our own role in this country and what everybody can do. I know it sounds funny to say that everybody has a role to play, that you can change history, you can make a difference, but it's the truth. We saw it with her. We saw it with the people that worked with her. Um, one person can change the course of history, can change the way things happen in an entire country. And that's what she did. And so we all need to understand that, embrace it. And every day as we go out to do, whether it's to go to work, go and visit somebody, we need to remember that. It needs to, it needs to become part of our, our conscious mind that every action that I make, every decision that I take, I have an impact to play. I have a role to play in this country and that I can do something that will be very good for the benefit of the people around me, which includes making my own personal hygiene and health good. Because if I'm sick and I come here on radio today, I've just made all of you sick. You all go home, you all make your family sick, they go to work and school, they make their classmates and their colleagues sick, and that's how you get outbreaks and massive casualties. So what would be the last word of people? Uh, let's take that from Dr. Lorita. Are uh, you a medical practitioner? You're correct? No, I'm not. Okay. I have a PhD. Wow. Public health. Public health. Public health. Good. As a public health expert, I'm a lot of things. I've heard you talk about epidemics and uh, and so. Uh, let's chat our people out there. You know, uh, people should not get scared. They should do the necessary things when it comes to uh, serious issues like this. What would be your word? Looking at all your experiences so far. I mean, I'm just going to echo what Miniola said and, you know, talk about just having good personal hygiene. That's the most important. Keeping your hands clean. Mm. Yes, that's it. All right, and now, uh, Miniola, show lay here. Yes. Uh, over to you. I uh, we'll just wanted to chat. Uh, look there, people out there, you know, emulating, uh, doing the need for at this moment. We just want to encourage everybody that, you know, you may not get national recognition for what you're doing, but it's important to continue doing the right thing. Um, it makes a difference. Somebody somewhere is appreciating you, and um, just keep pushing. That's, that's the message. All right, uh, it starts with you. <laughs> it starts with, it starts with me. It starts with, it starts with you. With it starts with us. So. Right. <laughs>
Okay, uh, it's really a wholesome session with our team from Dr. Ameo Stella, the Devil Trust Program. Uh, remember, uh, I don't know, is it D. Harry Hesse or you call it Drasa? Drasa, Drasa. 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 D. R. A. S. A. Which, just so everybody knows, D. R. is for Dr. A. S. A. is for Ameo Stella at that level. So Drasa is. I mean, that's why we call ourselves. All right, then, and the mission is to keep society safe from public health threat through the advancement of depression control practices, hygiene, and uh, sanitation behavior, yes. and outbreak preparedness and measure. Remember, if you're just tuning in, uh, this section will be available on our podcast in the next 24 hours so that you can share this information to people out there. I want to appreciate uh, Dr. Uh, Loretta Ovadie, the program director, for joining us today. Her name is Shole, yes. uh, she's the managing director for Drasa. Thank you, thank you so thank you, much you. for joining us today on Head Matters. I want to be so sure all your mind has been cleared today for people. Oh, yes. All right. And also, <laughs> I think we, we missed something. I think Prince join us. I think we're going to get the shout of Prince. And also, the man behind my scene, and that's Pascal Inwala for being there behind the scene and the camera to make sure everything is right and doing fine. It's still Samuel Halabi on your number one at Radio, Peanut Belt Radio. Remember, it's about staying healthy. And I keep alarming that it's about you living healthy and doing the need for. I'll see you on another next episode of Ed Matters. Till then, remember you can get our press of information using the hashtag PHR News on Facebook, Twitter, and also on Instagram. Remember, our keep it talk this evening and also women as at S Price. That will be twelve noon today. Don't change that that and get it connected to Pinabet Radio. I'll see you some other time.